everyone. I wanted to welcome you to Encounter Church. I'm Pastor Craig Rice, thank you for joining us today. I hope that this message inspires you, encourages you, and transforms What's you. What's going on, everyone? Today we are beginning a brand new series called Overcoming the Grinch Within Me. I think if you will take a close self-examination, especially during this time of year, the holidays, the hustle, the bustle, the craziness of life, the kids' school program, the Christmas banquets, the, the work parties, the get-togethers, and that's just to scratch the surface. That's not trying to find the perfect gift for your spouse or your kids or making sure you have all the money together to get this done and all the decorating and the baking that goes into the holiday season. I think we can relate greatly to this uh, series that we're starting because uh, we, if we take that self-evaluation look deep inside of us, we're going to see that a lot of us have an inner Grinch. And I want to talk about how to overcome that inner Grinch during this time. And hopefully it's not just a Christmas series, but this is going to be a series that is lived out every day that when you're dealing with difficult people, when you're struggling with, with finding uh, ways to, to handle the stress of life, that you're going to learn how to battle the Grinch within you. So let's dive in. Today, uh, my talk, my subject is going to be on this, finding the tender sweetness in the seasick crocodile. And we're going to take our text from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. And Paul is writing to Timothy, young Timothy, uh, and he says this, again I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants." interesting passage that Paul is writing to Timothy to remind him. Again, he says, you've got to be careful not getting involved in foolish things, avoiding ignorant arguments, strong words, and how to be gentle and patient with difficult people. Have you found yourself uh, using the words uh, snappy? I feel like I'm about to snap or you have somebody in your family that is just, they're just snappy. They just, you, you give a response and they just snap back at you. And you're trying to figure out, what did I do? Did, did I look wrong? Did I smell wrong? Like, what did I come in the room wrong? What, what happened? They're just snappy. And maybe you found yourself a little overly snappy during this season. Maybe, maybe you found yourself with a short fuse. Small things just seem to ignite this dynamite emotion from you. Or maybe you've said you're on edge. Like you're like teetering on the edge of crazy and sane and you're trying to figure out how to stay sane when the world has lost its mind. Maybe you're just simply annoyed. You're annoyed at people. If you're like me, it's driving into Walmart at five o'clock in the afternoon trying to find a parking space and, and I'm annoyed. I'm frustrated at it and people are just getting on my nerves. Or maybe you found yourself just simply oversensitive. The smallest things cause you to have a, a breakdown. Uh, they, they cause you to well up with tears or exude some sort of energy of anger or an outburst of emotion. Have you found yourself with that? Well, not only are we in good company in the scripture, but there's been many movies about this. Uh, and one of those movies is The Grinch. Probably one of my one of my top five favorite movies for Christmas time, right up there with It's a Wonderful Life and Christmas in Connecticut and Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, the Grinch is on those charts for me. And so we wanted to take this because we all have that inner Grinch that's snappy, has a short fuse, that is annoyed, people are getting on their nerves, and they're overly sensitive. And I think the Grinch puts it in one of the best ways that I could ever even imagine. And if you remember the scene in that, in that movie, 
uh, he is, he's coming home and, and, and he's, he goes through his calendar and he looks and his calendar reads like this. Four o'clock, wallow in self-pity. 4.30, stare into the abyss. Five o'clock, solve world hunger. Tell no one. <laughs> 5.30, jazzercise. 6.30, dinner with me. He says, I can cancel that again. 7 o'clock, wrestle with my self-loathing. I'm booked. Of course, if I bumped the loathing to 9, I could still be done in time to lay in bed, stare at the ceiling, and slip slowly in to madness. I've been there. You're probably there. It's that your calendar is booked. And, and a lot of times we have so much of this wallowing in self-pity, staring into the abyss, bumping into, in, in, into loathing, and, and finding ourselves slowly slipping into madness. In fact, the apostle Peter says it in his book in 1 Peter 5 and 8. He says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, many times we're looking at this as some out external source, something that's out from us. It's, it's not within, but the reality is, is that many times the Grinch isn't coming from something that's without, it's coming from something that's within. It's, it's dealing with, with the thing that's within inside of us, and, and we've got to stay alert. We've got to watch out because the small things can trigger us. The annoying things can trigger us. The, the short fuse can cause us to be triggered, and we have to be careful because that Grinch within is looking to devour our time, our energy, our efforts, our love, our patience, our commitments, and that inner Grinch wants to devour the very life. In fact, the entire story of the Grinch is about an individual that is trying to steal the whole Christmas season from others that are enjoying it. And I wonder what's the thing inside of you that has been trying to steal your joy in the middle of an incredible season? Because in reality, this season is not about the gifts and the banquets and work parties, and it's not about the cooking and the baking and, and all of that. What it's about is about a Savior that came to a dark world and gave light. It, it's about hope, and it's about reconciliation. It's about forgiveness. It's about love. It's about peace. But what is that very thing that's trying to steal the peace, steal the joy? What is that inner Grinch? And so I want to I begin this series by simply saying this. We've got to learn to ask better questions because asking better questions will lead to internal resolve. So the first question I want us to ask is this during this season is, why do I do what I do? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I going through? Why do I do what I do? In fact, the Apostle Paul Told you you're not alone, but the Apostle Paul dealt with this. He, he even wrote a, a verse that was so confusing but yet relatable. He says, the things I don't want to do, I do, and I, I do the things that I don't want to do, and why am I doing it? Why am I struggling with this? Why am I going through all of this? I, 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 I'm doing this, but I don't want to do it. And the things I really want to do, the things that I are pressing, the things that are on my schedule, on the calendar, spending time with my family, and and, and, and getting alone and close to God. Why am I not doing that and I'm, I'm doing other things? I'm busy worrying about things that I shouldn't be worrying about. You see, what I, I find is that a lot of us, we, we, we deal with, with surface things when we should be looking at in, internal things. The Grinch, the, the story that we find is, is as, as a little baby Grinch, um, he, was, he was laughed at. He was rejected because he was different. Uh, he didn't look like the rest of the kids, and instead of letting that go, he resorted to holding on to resentment, bitterness, and then eventually revenge. He, he allowed what others had done to him to cause himself to believe that he was less than, and so in an effort to self-preserve, he wanted to bring revenge to the ones that caused him as much pain and as much hurt. And that's the fallacy of revenge, is we think that we can inflict the same amount of pain that we have experienced, and that's not, that's not true. That's not for us. In fact, what the Grinch is doing in this entire story as, he's, as he is trying to get and steal the presents and the gifts and the joy from, from all of these who's down in Whoville, what he's doing is he's actually projecting. 
And projection refers to unconsciously taking unwanted emotions or traits you don't like about yourself and then attributing them to someone else. Projection comes down to self-defense. Protecting something you don't like about yourself and then projecting onto someone else protects you from having to acknowledge parts of yourself you don't like. We tend to feel more comfortable seeing negative qualities in others rather than ourselves. Like the Bible says, it's out of the heart that your mouth actually speaks. And so we try to project. In fact, one of the most amazing scenes in that movie is where the Grinch is sitting in his broken down recliner in his his cave and he begins to yell out and he says this because he hears the echo of the walls back and forth. He thinks that he can trick the echo into saying something different. And so what he's trying to do is he's trying to project something that's within. So he says this, he goes, and he yells out, I'm an idiot. And he's hoping that the the sound waves that are carrying in the cave are going to reverberate back and say, I am an idiot, which he can then laugh at and, and make fun and like, aha, you, ta- you called yourself an idiot. But what the, what the reverberation comes back is, is you're an idiot because that's what projection really is. It's, it's saying somebody is something when reality is, is that's exactly how I'm feeling. That's exactly what's in me. And sometimes that revelation needs to kind of sink in into us. Maybe... Maybe I'm snappy. Maybe I have a short fuse. Maybe the Grinch in me. I've been blaming others for my problems. I've been blaming the person taking my parking spot in Walmart. Or I've been, I've been blaming the, the individual that shows up late to the Christmas party. Or, or, or I've been blaming my family for not getting me the right gift. Maybe deep down inside, it, it's a lack of self-identity. Maybe it's, maybe it's us not feeling worth enough. Maybe we don't have value within ourselves, and so we project on others. We want to call them the idiot. We want to indulge in meaningless arguments. In fact, Paul said it like that, that we are involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. And we've got to learn how to be patient with difficult people. So I've realized that when you fix your heart, it'll actually fix your life. Because patience is greater than projection, even when you're dealing with difficult people. Patience is not the ability to wait, but it's the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. So you want to learn how to lengthen the fuse. You want to learn how to get off the edge. You want to learn how to not be so snappy. The question you need to ask is, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because it's searching inward. It's looking down inside. Maybe you've been impatient for the task at hand. Maybe the call that God has on your life isn't coming to pass right now. Maybe, maybe you're dealing with an internal struggle and God is like, will you just be patient? Because patience isn't the ability to wait. We can wait and still be impatient. But patience is learning to keep a good attitude while we wait for it to unfold. So I should ask, why do I keep arguing? Why do I keep finding myself in foolish, ignorant debates? Why am I not being patient to difficult people? And the question I would like to ask is, is, do you feel like you have something to prove? Do you feel like justice in your own life hasn't been served, and so you feel like you have the responsibility to bring justice to the world through your argument? Maybe, maybe you yourself have been hurt or been betrayed, and so you feel like it's your responsibility to protect others from being hurt or betrayed, and you find yourself in foolish, ignorant arguments, being impatient with difficult people. You're allowing the inner Grinch to win. Pointless arguments and debates is actually, like the Bible says, is like casting your pearls before pigs. And it's like this. When you wrestle with a pig, the pig's going to like it and you're going to end up dirty. Nothing good comes out of wrestling with a pig. In fact, the Grinch says it like this. He says, one man's toxic sludge is another man's potpourri. It, 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 
it smells good to the pig. The pig is used to it, and, and, and you're in this toxic sludge, and you're getting dirty, and you're getting filthy, and, and really what you're doing is you're just arguing with garbage. You're, you're arguing with foolish, ignorant debates, and, and you're not dealing with difficult people the way God has asked us to deal with difficult people, and you're allowing the inner Grinch to come out, and the toxic sludge smells good to the pig, but it's destroying you. In fact, Jesus says it like this in Matthew 7, do not judge others and you won't be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. The inner Grinch doesn't win. It only hurts you. It only causes more struggle. And those pearls, those sacred things cannot be wasted. Those arguments don't need to be saved for foolish things. They need to be saved for things that are right, for truth, for standing for justice and standing for hope and peace and righteousness. Save it for, stop wrestling with pigs. You're better than that. You're better than that. Instead, what the Bible shows us with this is instead of looking at what's wrong at your neighbor because you're projecting. Instead of looking for what's wrong, the speck in their eye, instead, ask a better question and say, why am I doing this? And we look not for what's wrong, but we start looking for the hidden need within them and within us. We look for the hidden need. The second question that I need to ask that leads to better internal resolve is this, why do I feel this way? See, what's on the inside is reflected on the outside. The countenance of a man rises and falls based on the level of internal stability and maturity and emotional stamina that one experiences internally. So what's on the inside is then reflected on the outside. You can see someone's countenance fall if they're depressed or discouraged or angry or, or upset. Or you can see one's lifted if they're full of joy and peace and, and hope and, and positivity. So why do I feel this way? And what I want to help unpack with this idea of overcoming the Grinch within me is, is the scene from the Grinch where he's standing outside of his cave, the snow's blowing, the wind is howling around him, it looks like a bitter, cold winter scene. And the Grinch pulls out a book. He pulls out this phone book in this story. And what the Grinch does is he opens it up to the first page and he reads the name. And he says, Ardvarkian who? I hate you. And then he goes to the next name and he says, I hate you. And then he goes to the next name and the next name he goes, hate, hate, hate. Hate, hate, double hate, loathe entirely. And what he does is as he's flipping through this book, this phone book of who's, he sees the ones that have wronged him, the ones that have hurt him, the ones that have laughed at him. And he's holding on to offenses. And instead of letting that go, what he's done is he's held on to it and he's allowed the bitterness to turn into hatred. Because he's believed the report that they've given. They've said he's a nobody. They said he's an outcast. They said he's different and he can't be like anyone. And so when he reads the book, when he sees the person, it's not forgiveness, it's hatred. And I wonder today as you're watching this, are you holding on to past offenses that when you see that person or their name gets brought up, you flip to the book and you remember what they've done to you. You remember what they've said about you. You remember that they tried ruining your reputation. They, you remember the bad business deal. You remember the things that they did behind your back. You remember the things they said about your family. And you can look at it and loathe them entirely. 
or you can learn that love keeps no record of wrong. It's like this. Paul says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Colossians 2 and 14 says, He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Psalms 130, verse 3 and 4 says, Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. Jesus burned the book of every offense that we made against him. We're the ones. We've sinned. We've messed up. We've fallen short and we haven't lived up to our responsibility. And Jesus could have kept a record of wrong, but because God is love, love keeps no record of wrong, and the book, the handwriting, the things that have been written about you, he nailed it to the cross already. It's done. It's over. There is no record against you. And if there's no records against you from God, then why are we holding on to the records that others have done to us. The inner Grinch is not quick to forgive, but the moment we overcome the inner Grinch is when we actually learn how to quickly forgive others. Forgiveness is not erasing, it's releasing. It's not erasing, it's releasing. And what forgive, unforgiveness does to hurt you Forgiveness does to free you. So therefore, freedom that is birthed from forgiveness is the ability to do what is right. I want to remind you, forgiveness was not our idea. It was God's. From the very beginning of time, forgiveness and unforgiveness battled between two brothers of Cain and Abel, and jealousy took over Cain to kill his brother Abel. It started from the very beginning. It, forgiveness was not our idea. It was God's. But God has always made a way of escape so that he could forgive us. In fact, Matthew 6 and 12, Jesus is teaching the disciples to pray. And he says, pray this way. And then in the middle of the prayer, it's, it says this, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one. Rescue us from the Grinch within. And if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And if you hold on to the book, it's hard for Him to forgive those things. We have to release them. It's not erasing. It's releasing Luke 6 and 37 says this, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. Did you pay attention to that? He says, if you learn how to give forgiveness, you're going to receive forgiveness back. But if you learn how to give unforgiveness and grudge and hatred, if you learn how to be the Grinch to others, then no wonder it seems like they're the Grinch coming back to us. But the moment we overcome the Grinch by learning to quickly forgive we will realize that forgiveness is an abundance and the more forgiveness I give, the more forgiveness I get back. So we've got to learn how to forgive. So why do I feel this way? It may be because you've been holding on to the book a little too long. Release it. And finally, my third question for us today is how do I restore the sweetness you see, the song about the Grinch says that 
He has the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile. And I think a lot of us feel that way in seasons like this. We, we, we feel tossed about. We feel kind of seasick because of, of everything that's going on. I don't know about you, but the last two years, I feel seasick. It's just this constant up and down, wave after wave after wave. And I feel seasick. And we can be caught up in, in showing the seasick crocodile nature. And the song is to give some, some uh, funny thing about, about how a seasick crocodile has no tender sweetness. But the reality is, is that the seasick crocodile is only a label that you've given yourself. Really with inside of you is some tender sweetness that needs to be released. It's not some sarcastic thing like the song is trying to prove. This is real. There is a tender sweetness within you. And it's restoring the tender sweetness within the seasick crocodile. And so I've got a few things along this line. Number one is this. We need to give others and God the best version of ourselves. Your bad day is not the best version of yourself. You having a bad attitude is not the best version of yourself. You dealing with rejection and hatred and, and, and holding on to the book and, and you, you projecting on others, that's not the best version of you. You're better than this. But we got to give others and God the best version of ourselves every day. Two is we need to learn to receive forgiveness by forgiving others and ourselves. We need to receive forgiveness. God, I've messed up. Apologize to your friend. Apologize to that. I'm sorry. I messed up. Will you forgive me? And then actually receive forgiveness. Receiving forgiveness releases the grudge you hold against yourself. Because too often we can beat ourselves up. Why did I say that? Man, that was a dumb thing to do. I can't believe I went there. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I text that. I can't believe I posted that. I can't believe I looked at that. And we can beat ourselves up over that, or we can learn to receive forgiveness by saying, if they'll forgive me and God will forgive me, then I have to forgive myself. You release it. Three, we need to intentionally find the good in all things. Intentionally find the good. There may be a lot of bad, but there's a lot of good. Intentionally look for the good. Four, we need to never argue with a pig. You want to find the tender sweetness within you? Stop arguing with pigs. Stop throwing the wisdom that God's given you. Stop throwing pearls. And you feel attacked? Well, it's maybe because you're throwing the pearls before people and things and situations that are going to turn around and attack you anyway. The Bible talks about this. This isn't some new concept. You want to learn how to overcome the Grinch within. You want to find the tender sweetness of the seasick crocodile. Never argue with a pig. The next one is this. We need to learn how to control what we can and burn the book. Control what I can. I can control my forgiveness. I can control how what they've done to me affects me. I can control that, and I've got to burn the book. I've got to release the book. I've got to let the book go. I can't keep looking back to see what they've done, how they've said it. I can't continue to hold the book. I've got to let the book go. I can control this. I may not be able to control what they say, but I can control how I believe and what I receive from what they say. And finally, I need to learn how to help those in need. Maybe instead of looking for the speck, I can actually start looking for the need. Why are they acting that way? You want to have patience with difficult people? Figure out why are they acting that way? How can I help? Where is the need? Because something is going on deep down inside of them just like something is going on deep down inside of us. And if you take the first letter of each of those words, it spells out Grinch. You want to overcome the Grinch within? You give others and God the best version of yourself. You receive forgiveness by forgiving others and yourself. You intentionally find the good in all things. You never argue with a pig. You control what you can and burn the book, and you help those in need. That, my friend is where you are going to find the tenderness within the seasick crocodile. Because the moment you start focusing on others, the Grinch withers and dies inside.
The seasick crocodile now no longer has rule. It no longer has control because the seasick crocodile, the Grinch within, is self-centered. But the moment I start focusing on others and I start focusing on God, all of that else, everything else dies. Everything else fades away. Everything else gets shut in. And I can heal and I can be restored because I can't allow the Grinch within to win. So maybe this season, it's not so much about the cooking and the baking and the shopping and the gifts and the money and the Christmas parties and the banquets and, 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 and the white elephant gifts at work and, and trying to get the right present for your spouse or trying to make your kid happy. Maybe the Grinch is right. Maybe, maybe this story is correct because it says it like this. It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that you have given us a revelation today that we have the tenderness with inside of us to overcome the seasick crocodile, to eliminate the Grinch within, that we can deal with difficult people the way you have asked us to, with wisdom and respect and love. So, Father, I pray that you would help us to throw away the book, that we would get rid and release the unforgiveness of our life, and may we cherish the hope and the joy that you have set before us May we realize that this season is not about material things, but it's about your presence, your goodness, and your joy in our lives. Today, God, I want to just say, I give you my life. I give you the Grinch within, and I'm pledging, and I'm determining to make a fresh start with you. So I ask that you would come into my life, remove the Grinch, fill the space that has a God-sized hole in it, I've been missing you, and I've been needing you. Will you take up residence, fill that void, and will you be the Lord and Savior of my life? Today, I am determined to make a fresh start with you. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to celebrate with you. If you just gave a fresh start today, hey, message us. Find out on our website, EncounterIdaho.com. Message us. Contact us. Let us know. We want to be there with you. We want to help you with the next steps. Taking this is an incredible journey, and God has great things in store for you. Let's overcome the Grinch within together. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to encourage you to take this message you just heard and allow Jesus to transform your soul. Today, our prayer is that you have an amazing week. Thanks for being a part of the Encounter Church family. 